down. Very well. A battle it shall be. Battle one. Fight! Often seen as this intimidating mess of numbers, frame data is usually considered to be one of the more off-putting aspects when it comes to learning a fighting game. But in reality, frame data is not all that complicated, and while not essential to enjoying fighting games, understanding a little frame data can help level up your gameplay in not just Soul Calibur, but other fighting games as well. Before diving into the specifics, it will be important to know what a frame means in a fighting game. In animation terminology, frames are the individual images used in a sequence to create the appearance of motion. So what does all that gibberish mean? Well, Sophia's 5A for example, is animated with a sequence of 12 images, in other words, 12 frames. Most fighting games, Soul Calibur included, runs on a standardized system of 60 frames per second, meaning there are 60 images displayed to you in a span of one real world second. Putting the two together, knowing that Sophia's 5A is 12 frames, means that it is 12 60th of a second, or 200 milliseconds. So at its core, frame data is the unit of measurement that we use to describe time, or more accurately, the speed of actions in fighting games. Now I know what you're thinking. Why don't we just use seconds or milliseconds to describe time like a normal person? Well, most actions in fighting games happen in a fraction of a second. So having to constantly say something is 5 50th of a second, or 8.33 milliseconds, is a little awkward and unintuitive when it's simply easy to just say it's 5 frames. With this knowledge, we can now see how attacks can be described with frame data. Nearly every attack in Soul Calibur can be broken down into 3 phases. The startup phase, impact or active phase, and the recovery phase. The startup phase is best described as the beginning or the wind up part of an attack. Startup frames will determine the speed of the attack, so attacks with a shorter startup will come out faster than attack with a longer startup. The impact phase, or sometimes referred to as the active phase, is when the attack can make contact with your opponent. Generally, you'll want longer impact frames, as this will allow the attack to have more of an opportunity to deal damage. The recovery phase is the end or follow through of your attack. As the name would suggest, recovery frames determine how long it takes before you can act again after attacking. So the longer the recovery frames, the longer you have to wait. With this in mind, most attacks can generally be summed up to as weaker attacks will have a short up startup and recovery time but will deal low damage, while stronger attacks will do higher amounts of damage at the cost of having a much longer startup and recovery time. Startup frames and impact frames are normally static, so they do not change much, if not at all during a match. Recovery frames, on the other hand, can vary greatly depending if the attack hits or gets blocked. This is where knowing hit stun and block stun comes in. Hit stun is a state in which your character reels back in pain after getting hit. You will be unable to perform any actions while you are stuck in hit stun. Block stun is the exact same idea except, well, your character is blocking. You will be unable to act again until you are out of block stun. Now with this new information, let's once again go back to our Sophitia example. The frame data for Sophitia's 5A is as follows. 12 frames on startup, plus 2 frames on hit, and minus 8 frames on block. To help give you a better understanding of what these numbers mean, let's apply it to a real in-game scenario. Blue Sophitia will attack with a 5A and Orange Sophitia will block it. Blue Sophitia is now stuck in her recovery animation and Orange Sophitia is now in her block stun animation. If both Sophitias were to attack right after with a 5A, Orange Sophitia's attack will come out first. This happens because Blue Sophidia recovered 8 frames slower after having her attack block, hence the minus 8 frames on block. 
Now let's rewind back to the beginning with the same situation, except this time Blue Sophia will use an attack that is zero on block. Both Sophidias will now recover at the same time, so their 5 A's will clash. Rewinding once again, Blue Sophidia will now use an attack that is plus 4 on block. This time Blue Sophidia will recover 4 frames faster, beating out her opponent's attack. This concept of plus and minus frames is called frame advantage, and every single attack in Soul Calibur will have both an on hit and on block value. Using too many attacks that are really minus on block is generally not the best idea. A miscalculation, perhaps? If your attack on block has enough minus frames, then your opponent will have enough time to punish you for the attack before you can even recover. This is referred to as block punishment and is one of the primary reasons why many people choose to learn frame data. As you can probably imagine, what makes frame data truly daunting is the fact that every character will have their own unique set of frame values. Unless you have an excellent memory, no one's expecting you to learn the frame values of over a thousand plus attacks, and explaining the frame data for every character is well beyond the scope of this guide. But luckily for you, there are some attacks and defensive actions that will share the same frame data, making it a little bit easier. While frame data can be seen as being fairly important, it is not an absolute. As we will see later on, frame data alone is not enough to decide the value of an attack. Summing up, knowing frame data as a whole is like ordering dessert after eating a well-rounded meal. It's a nice little extra bonus that can enhance your experience with the game, but not 100% required for you to enjoy it. Hopefully this section gives you at least a basic understanding of frame data, but if you're interested in learning more, then I highly recommend you check out the many excellent resources available to you online. Hey guys, thanks for watching. This was just one of the many segments in my full Soul Calibur tutorial that covers everything from the bare basics to learning how to play with confidence. If you're interested in the rest, I highly recommend you check them out on their YouTube channel. Until then, thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.